Today, we're going to talk about the essential coding project you need on your portfolio to get that first software job. So you're here watching this video looking for a project to build that you can put on your portfolio. And we feel like that every portfolio, especially people looking for that first software job, needs a showcase. They need a flagship application, that essential coding project that they can hang their hat on, especially if you're looking for full stack web dev, which is what we recommend that you should be doing, is you need an application that shows all of the skills, the front end, the back end, the database, so that you can impress that hiring manager during that interview to get that first software job. We feel like there's one project that fits all of those roles perfectly, and that project is a bug tracker. And our bug tracker is a piece of software that we've been building since 2014 here at Coder Foundry. And the bug tracker encompasses all of the traits, all of the features, and everything that you need to really showcase what you can do during the interview process. Now, during this video, I'm gonna tell you why you should build a bug tracker, I'm gonna tell you what is in the bug tracker that you need to have, the features and everything that needs to take place in order that you can demo that to get a software job. And finally, I'm gonna tell you how to demo it. How can we use it to make sure that we put our best foot forward in any interview situation? So my name is Bobby Davis. I'm the CEO and founder of Coder Foundry. I also run a consulting company and I've helped hundreds and hundreds of software developers find jobs. And through all of my years, when I talk to people that are successful during the interview process and not successful, one thing has stuck out to me as the primary reason people don't land software jobs. And it's not because you don't know how to code necessarily. It's not because you're doing something fundamentally wrong and what you learned or anything like that. It's the thing that you showed during the interview process. Now, many people don't have anything to show. They just want Somehow you think the interviewer person should trust you that you know how to do it based on the school you went to or the education process you followed. It could be a boot camp, it could be a technical community college, it could be a CS degree. But if you don't have anything to show, the interviewer has to make the logical leap that you can learn the things that they need you to do to be successful on the job. That all changes when you have a flagship application. Now I know learning to code is difficult and hard and the app that we talk about here the bug tracker the level at which we're building may not be your first app that you build so we're not saying that the essential coding project the bug tracker is the only app you need we think it's the flagship app it's the culmination of all of your study efforts in order to when you're ready to interview have something to show someone and so don't walk in there with just a resume and a smile and a, and a cs degree walk in there with confidence that you're gonna turn an interview situation into a demo. And we're gonna use this bug tracker to show everything that you can do. Now, this project is essential. And I want you to understand, it is essential to have your project like this on your portfolio. It dramatically increases your chance to win a role. There's several myths I wanna talk about when we talk about putting the essential project on your portfolio. Now. The thing that you'll find out with other boot camps and maybe a CS degree at a university is you have a capstone project, something that you need to put all your skills into, all the things that you learn and create one project. And it seems like a good idea, but a lot of times they leave that project up to you. And so this is normally labeled, build your passion project. Just pick anything, build whatever you want. But what if your idea isn't a good idea? So I've seen like tender for hikers, you know, like where you swipe left or right if you want to find a hiking buddy. And this seems like a bad idea to me. Now, it may be a great idea to people that want to hike the Appalachian Trail, but to me, it seems like a bad idea. And when you're building your passion project, it may not solve a business problem that the interviewer thinks is kind of worthy. Also, you might not think big enough. You may come back with, oh, I'm interested in Pokemon. So you build a Pokedex and that's your capstone project. And I've seen a lot of those in portfolios and that's simply not big enough. You have to think bigger. And the, the folly in the University of the Coding Bootcamp says build your passion project is they're not giving you enough context, enough frame of reference to figure out what to build. It's not that you can't build it. You need to know what to build. And I think what you need to build not your passion project, but something that's immediately recognizable 
by the person that you're going to interview with. And that's why we recommend building a bug tracker as your essential coding project, that flagship, because it is immediately recognizable. The first time you show it, they know exactly what it's supposed to do and how it should behave. And they can look at it and go, oh, that's a really cool bug tracker. I like what you did there. Todd McFarlane, the creator of Spawn, a very famous comic artist, also did a great Spider-Man run, in case you wanted to know. He was asked, how does someone break into comics today? And he said, well, if I was going to DC, I would draw Batman. If I was going to Marvel, I would draw Spider-Man. I wouldn't try to submit my custom character to any of these companies. I would draw something that they immediately know because you can look at Spider-Man and Marvel can say, well, that's a great Spider-Man or that's a bad Spider-Man. So you need to draw a character that they immediately are familiar with and immediately recognize. And that's what we're saying about the bug tracker. Build something that both of you understand. Because when you both understand what the app's supposed to do, then you can have an intelligent conversation around it. And that's the goal of this essential coding project is to have something to talk about during the interview instead of code trivia technical questions which is how most technical interviews go. You show them your software and you get to have a conversation about how you solved this feature, how you implemented this feature, or what did you, how did you code this up? What was your solution to that? And those are great conversations that you can have with a hiring manager. Instead of them trying to quiz you on what you know, now you're showing them what you know and you have them talking about it. And now the question's over whether you code or not, they're talking about, what did you do? And that is where you want to get through in an interview is show them what you can do by demoing a project that both of you understand. Now, one of the other myths that we see a lot of times is people say, hey, build your project in whatever you want. It doesn't matter what stack or language or anything you build it in. As long as you can build it and show it, it'll look the same. People don't care what you build your project in. And I want to tell you, I don't think that's great advice. What I want you to think about is I want you to build it in the stack that's in most demand. I want you to do some research in your area to see what are the most of the companies using? Because if you can walk in the door during an interview, show them a bug tracker that's also written in the same language and stack that they use on the day to day, it puts you in a much stronger position as a candidate. If you walk in with a different language and a different stack, something they don't use, a, they may not interview to begin with, but B, if they do, they've got to interpolate, can this person learn a new stack um, while they're coming into my company? So I want you to build it in the stack that is most popular in your area. Now, if you have no idea what to choose, let us tell you what we would choose. We would choose ASP.NET MVC. Now at Coder Foundry, we've been teaching this since 2014 for years and years. And we know that ASP.NET MVC is backed by Microsoft and it's in high demand with customers large and small. So if you're in the US, it doesn't really matter what state you're in, there is a demand for .NET developers. And so we think you should build it in ASP.NET MVC so that you have the best chance of interviewing with a company that's using that stack. Now, the other myth that we see is you need to work in small amounts of time, or maybe like you can learn to code in one hour per day. And you probably, if you've done any kind of study, that's simply not true. You need to spend blocks of time, committed time of study in order to do this. And when you take on a project like the bug tracker, you just can't do this from six to seven, you know, three nights a week. You're gonna have to commit a significant amount of block of time to build this. And we recommend maybe a Saturday or a Sunday or significant hours at night while you're working to do this in a part-time fashion. So commit a lot of time to this. You'll make a lot more progress. You'll learn a lot more and you'll turn out with a better project. Now, when we're talking about building a bug tracker, that essential coding project that you need to have, um, there's several things that it needs to do. And this is why we recommend it. But let's go through the essential things that a bug tracker must have in it. The first essential thing is when you're building it, I think you need to follow an accepted design pattern. Now, that's why we recommend ASP.NET MVC. It's because MVC is an architectural design pattern, stands for Model View Controller. Now, there's several of these design patterns out there, but do not think that you can roll your own pattern or make up a new pattern when you're building this. Make sure you follow an accepted design pattern, because if you don't, 
the employer may think, well, they can't really follow the rules or they really don't know how these things work. Therefore, I don't know if they're a good fit. But if you walk in following an accepted design pattern like NBC, and even if they're using something like MVVM in their department, they'll know that, oh, this person can implement design patterns. Therefore, they should be able to implement our design pattern as well. So make sure that you're using a design pattern when you're building it. The next kind of key point is this thing must look good. You must have a professional UI. I want to stress this. I can't stress enough when we talk to Coder Founder students that, okay, we went through all of this effort into building this, but then the UI looks kind of clunky or it's not well maintained or the things are out of order, stuff's not lined up, the colors are bad. You need to make sure that it is professional, clean, and attractive. Now imagine if you went and bought a car but the car had some dents, some rust, maybe the paint was a bad color, or it was mismatched here and there, um, maybe it was missing a hubcap or something like that, you would think less of that car. We got Chevy, we got Ford, we got Daewoo. They couldn't really convince you ever, well, the engine's in great shape. Everything under the hood works fine. It's just the outside needs a little work. It's no longer acceptable to say, hey, I'm a back-end person. I don't know how to design those things. Therefore, I don't really care about the UI. You must care about the UI because make no mistake, people are visual buyers. And you think about the way you buy things, you look at how it looks on the outside and that influences you whether you buy that or not. And that's why companies spend marketing dollars on packaging and storefronts and all these things because they know that first impression, that first visual impression is very important. And the first time you show your bug tracker application to an employer, that first login page, that first homepage, has to be on point. And that's why we recommend, hey, why don't you think about this? Why don't you use a template? Why don't you buy a professional template and implement that template in your project? And therefore you can ensure that the colors are correct, the color palette's great, and the layout and everything is in the right place and where it should be. So make sure that professional UI is on point. Now, another feature that every great project should have especially the bug tracker when we're talking about that is it must implement a database if you're going for a full stack job one of the primary things you must be able to do is interact with a database and this is no exception here so this needs to have the crud operations built out you know the the writes the edits the deletes the updates all of those things need to be in place here so that the user can add data delete data update data so make sure that you're implementing a database behind the scenes and that lends weight and credibility to your project. The other key feature that I think you need to think about is security. Now, security is at the forefront of every discussion any modern um, web application development shop has. Security is pretty much job one, which means you must have a login and you must give people roles and permissions what they're in to do. Now we call this authorization and authentication. Authentication is the act of logging in, letting someone in. Authorize is what can they do once they're logged in. You need to implement both of these features in your app. Now you can do this a couple of ways. Now, if you're using ASP.NET and NBC, guess what? Identity's built in, it's ready to go for us, it's already created. But if you use another framework, you may have to either roll your own which I don't recommend, or do something different. And the other thing that you could do is implement a third party authentication like Auth0, Azure has them, AWS has them. And implementing a third party auth system is also a skill and component that people look highly on like, oh, wow, you built that with Auth0, that's great. But however you do it, use something that's built into the frameworks like ASP.identity, or use something a third party like Auth0. And finally, the last key component of the bug tracker, any project you build, is it must solve a recognizable business problem. Now we've already talked to this a little bit, but if your project doesn't solve a business problem, you need a new project. Because typically when you're going to the company, the company is solving business problems. And that's why we don't recommend things like Tic-Tac-Toe and Connect4, even though they're kind of tough coding projects and you may be essentially proud of them, they don't really do anything. They play a game or they don't really solve a business problem. And the hiring manager is trying to solve real business problems. Now, a bug tracker solves a business problem, meaning that, hey, if I have defects in my software, I need to track the management of those defects. 
how it's assigned and the workflow to make sure those get pushed into production. Everyone has this problem and it needs to be solved. And so building a project has a recommended um, business problem is essential to your coding project. So if you don't want to build the butt tracker and you want to build something else, make sure it solves a business problem. So let's talk about building the bug tracker. Like how can we actually build this project now that you're convinced? You're like, All right, Bobby, you've convinced me. I'm going to build it. So what is a bug tracker? Like what's in it? A bug tracker essentially is where users that could be an external facing user or an internal user finds a defect in a software system that they're using. And then they report that defect to the IT department. And that request typically comes into a dev manager or a project manager assigned to look at the defects coming in. And then they'll assign that defect to the appropriate resource that could be a developer or a team lead or something like that. So a bug tracker pretty much records that entire process working a defect from an open to a close state to a push into a production. And so you can see how that's very important to every software department. Now, since every software department uses, that means when you show this, this project to someone, they know essentially what the bug tracker is supposed to do. And that's why we keep telling you to build it this way because it's immediately recognized by the hiring manager. So let's talk about the process that you need to follow to build this. First off is what I would do is I build something called a SRS, a software requirements document, SRD, SRS. And those things pretty much detail all the features that are in the bug tracker. So you're gonna have a login system, you're gonna have a ticket reporting system, you're gonna have a ticket re detail system where it looks at individual tickets and a way for you to look at tickets maybe by project level or by the developer level. So you have a lot of different screens in here and I need you to write down each and every feature that would be in your bug tracker. And that gives you the scope of the project, but I want you to save this document because you can actually use this in the interview process. And then I want you to start at the top and start checking off each individual feature inside of your SRS. And you record these as individual work items. Now, as you're building this out and you build out your database and you have the ability for you to enter in these work items or these bugs or issue requests, now you can use your system to start recording the work as you build the bug tracker. Now, of course, you got to get to a certain point, but once you get there, you can start using your half built system record all the work items as you go through your SRS and build it out. And then once it's complete, in retrospect, you can look at all the tasks that you completed to get to your version one of the bug tracker, and you can show that in the interview. And that's very important. Now we're using our software to track the process of building our software during the interview process. So you can show the hiring manager, okay, not only did I build this, but I used it and this is how I used it. And they can see the utility in your bug, bug tracker software. It's not just a showpiece. This thing actually works because I use it to track the software projects that I'm building. So when you take the bug tracker as a whole project, um, and this is why we recommend that you build it, is because it sets you apart from every other developer that they're gonna see. At the most, they may have a develop, they may have a portfolio with some smaller projects on it, but you're going to walk in with an enterprise grade flagship project that encompasses all the features that you need to have, all the skills that you need to have to be successful at their work. And if someone's showing tic-tac-toe or 50 small projects, they're never going to get the opportunity to show all of those. And you can shortcut the interview by showing one complete project that demonstrates all the skills you have. And that set you apart from every other person that's going to interview for that role by having this flagship project. So if you got all the way through this, let me tell you the one major mistake that people use, even when they're coming out of Coder Foundry, is they go through all this effort of building this bug tracker, this massive project, and they go into an interview and they never show it. One of the things, kind of the norms that you've got to break in the interview process is typically we walk in the door, we shake hands, we say, hello, thank you for interviewing me. And we sit down and we wait for them to ask us questions and we never demo it. So what I want you to do is think about this. I want you to be brave because they're not expecting you to have a project in this caliber. And that's why they don't ask to see it because most people don't have anything to show, especially for people that are breaking in as a junior dev, the first software job they've ever had. They're just trying to determine, can you code? And so what you need to do is break that norm by, ask, by saying this, Hey, I know that you have lots of questions you want to ask, 
why don't you take the time to look at this project I've built? I think it better represents what I can do as a software developer. And then we can decide if I'm a good fit for this role. You mind looking at my projects? And then that demo can turn into questions. Now, the other thing that you need to do is if they say no, what you can do is take any interview question and make sure that question can be answered by your bug tracker. Now, if you build the bug tracker, like we're saying, it pretty much would answer the top 80 interview questions of any .NET interview. Um, and that's the level that you want to get to. And if you can answer a question, not only academically, but also with your code, you're going to win an interview. Hey, if you're watching this video and you want to learn how to code, go to learn.coderfoundry.com and we can teach you all the skills you need to build that essential coding project like the bug tracker. That one project you need to get a software job. Go to learn.coderfoundry.com.